Namaste. Namaste. Peace to the family. Power to the people. Blessings. So I'm just over here taking a walk in the park, soaking up some nature. As you can see, the truth is in the trees. That is the nature within ourselves. And ultimately, I wanted to share something with you guys that not only is it in our nature to live our most fulfilled life, but it is also in our nature to speak truth upon what it is that we feel. So I kind of wanted to bring this thing raw, you know, because I'm just coming off of a blessings, peace, and love, you know. I'm just coming off of this raw seven-day challenge. And, you know, I did seven days just raw, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and, um, you know, that's it. Nothing else. No processed food, you know, staying away from the fried foods. And it was definitely something, you know, it was definitely an experience. And when I did it, I learned, you know, it gave me so much devotion, so much discipline in, you know, the way that I eat. But I've already felt like I've had that along the way and along the path. So this video is specifically talking about dieting versus living. And if you look at the English spell of a word, diet, you know, it's described and defined as a habitual response that a person, an animal, uses to eat habitually to sustain some form of nutrition. But these habits ultimately are perpetuated upon us and don't have anything to do with nutrition in the sense that, you know, we have, um, you know, we have a sort of come into culture. So that's another thing about dieting, right? This, these habitual responses ultimately come at a, at a cost for the place that we've been grown up into or, you know, the lifestyle that we choose to live. So, you know, diet has a strong thing to do with culture and dieting versus living. The reason I change it to, you know, the way that I live it, you know, not my diet, my live it is because ultimately the food that you eat sustains life and it sustains your temple, right? The greatest temple of all is the body. So, you know, that's one aspect of what I want to speak on. But ultimately, you know, we find ourselves in the mix. You know, we find ourselves in the mix. And we get so caught up with, oh, I'm hungry, so let me grab something really fast because I'm wanting to move. And we never really make time for ourselves to really just appreciate love. Not appreciate, appreciate love, you know, what it is that this earth has bought us you know wherever your food is coming from whether it's coming from grandma's kitchen or it's coming from sloppy mcdonald's forget about mcdonald's you know people eating fried chicken sandwiches right now from popeyes and getting killed over them meanwhile you want to go and try it for what reason i don't even know but i think that we need to change this whole not only changing the language but the way that we eat really is a principle for how we carry ourselves through our lives. So, you know, that's just, um, that's one aspect, right? So then dieting versus living. There's perpetuated agendas. There are perpetuated agendas. You know, there really are perpetuated agendas that people get snobby over, right? So like, let's say I'm a vegan, right i'm saving the animals i'm saving the earth i don't like you know you know i don't like doing that so the thing with veganism isms and schisms is that ultimately every diet has an agenda attached to it so the agenda i would say for veganism look at this tree right here it's the fall 
the leaves are down. But the di- the the veganism diet, I would say, is basically is basically I'm gonna sit by the tree for a little while. Veganism is perpetuating an agenda because not everybody, the whole world is not going to be vegan. The whole world is not going to be vegan. Because we ultimately have to see how cultures have originated and have expanded off of, you know, the way that people eat and the way that people have grown for a long time. So people actually end up trying to live up to a lifestyle that was perpetuated against them when actually it actually doesn't have any um, positive effect or nutritional benefits to their body. So being a vegan means that you stop eating dairy products, means that you stop eating animal products. And I ultimately, you know, want to promote, you know, a healthy lifestyle, eating live foods, living foods, but at the same time, realizing that every food actually has a constitution to it. Every food has an element attached to it. And if we don't free ourselves from propaganda that's perpetuated onto us of how we should live and how we should be rather than paying attention to the own internal signs, then we'll ultimately lack truth in what it is that um, we're trying to attain, which is success and prosperity and all these different things in our lives. So, you know, people, I, I went from a transition personally. Paleo, I was doing for six months. I did meats, fruits, and vegetables. You know, that's no carbs, no rice, no bread, or anything like that. And then I went from a transition from paleo to pescatarian, only eating seafood, you know. And I did that for about two years. My mom actually trans, transitioned to pescatarian as well, and she's still a pescatarian to this day. And then after the two years of pescatarian, I also did vegetarianism after that for another two years. And then I realized that a lot of these snacks had milk and eggs and I was, you know, eating a lot of sugar and stuff like that. So I was like, let me just go full vegan. But ultimately, you know, I had to find a peace within myself to realize that if I go fishing and I make the offering myself, then possibly, you know, I scale it and clean it myself. And I'm participating in a culture that actually gets it straight from the ocean, then yeah, I might eat a fish. If I'm in India and they worship cows, there's no McDonald's in India, by the way, because Babylon will go to hell for that because they're going to burn it down based off of the fact that they actually worship cows. And we need to see animals as, you know, we need to treat animals with more empathy, you know, with the ability to, um, you know, have a brain of their own, have a, have organs of their own, and I think that this will allow us to wake to this will allow to wake us up um, in our relationship to animals. But now I see myself, you know, not living in a perpetuated agenda of being a vegan of a paleo. You know, I would consider myself um, plant based, but at the same time, I'm studying Ayurveda, and I see that every fruit and every vegetable is not for me. You know, rest in peace to Dr. Sebi, who actually, um, you know, who actually perpetuated the agenda of alkaline. Because people will tell you that it's alkaline, but they don't know the pH of the stomach, right? I think it's about um, 3.5 to 6.5, something like that. But the neutral pH is from 7 to to 7.5, usually in the body, the saliva, you know. Our digestive system is over 30 feet long. That's five of meat. I'm pretty tall. Let me stand next to this tree right now. I'm pretty tall. So for me to say that's how many wines and turns that my intestinal organs are actually taken from my throat down to my anus and, you know, my urethra and all of those different things, that's five of me. So how is it that I can cleanse myself if if I'm continuously pushing um, food down my throat? in a rush at that, not even taking our time and enjoying the meal to be able to uh, cleanse my intestinal organs, my body. This is why it's important to fast because I, I, you know, I always wonder where the word fast comes because when I fast, things actually, you know, they enliven me, you know, 
I take time and I'm more sensitive. Uh, you know, things become slow. Like I have superpowers because it's like I'm more sensitive to the internal awareness of what actually goes on to me. Look at these ducks right now. They're coming to me. They coming. They hearing the message. And it's like since I'm uh, you know, since I'm allowed to feel the energy and feel the things that come into me, then I have the ability to become sensitive not only to the things that are in, inside of me, but outside of me as well. And it allows me to grow as an individual so that I can share the light that I've manifested from my food. Fruits and vegetables take light from the sun and produce nutrients and, and, and beauty of a colors and arrays and spectrums that we can ingest and, and provide life, not only to human beings, but to all around across the globe. And we live in, in, in a beautiful planet where we take advantage of the simple things. So to be aware of what it is that we put in our body is ultimately to be aware as what we put out. And I'm gifted by the presence of, you know, of such beauty around me. You know, I'm gifted by the presence of such beauty around me. And right now as I study Ayurveda, I realize that every food, every food, everything in this earth is attached to an element. Whether it be earth, we call spice for a reason. Spice actually heats the body. There are different types of spices. Herbs usually cool the body. So you have water, earth, fire, air. You know, we have mucus, we have blood, we have air, we have um, things that heat the body, things that cool the body, things that allow us to become uh, one with our element, our nature. Ultimately, I'm a Capricorn, which is an earth sign. So I have to find myself sometimes, if I'm out of tune with my body, I would have to find myself in root of, um, you know, in root of eating root vegetables, maybe eating some potatoes, some carrots, some rat, some radishes, you know, there's so much beauty out there and we're limited, especially because of geographical locations. Ayurveda also talks about eating food apart from, I wish I had some bread for these geese right now, <laughs> but, um, you know, eating food actually allows us to, look at this, eating food actually allows us to We need to eat food according to the elements. So we have summer, spring, earth. Um, we have summer, spring, winter, and fall. And in summer, spring, winter, and fall, you know, we are able to find different vegetables and different fruits that are attained to that season. And this will ultimately help us to live more fulfilled lives. There are certain fruits and vegetables that we shouldn't mix with each other. So you have oranges, you have apples, you have, um, you, you have, uh, bananas, you know, then you have a sit, you know, you have, you have, so these are sub acid fruits, sweet fruits, um, acidic fruits, and these different types of fruits, we shouldn't be mixing sometimes together. So, you know, be careful of the pH that you're influencing in your body because this throws off our digestive system. So going from dieting to living and being open to the fact that we have a truth within us, you know, that we can express only when we live our greatest truth. So follow your intuition and know what it is to actually, uh, you know, to actually reflect on what it is that you put in your body. Imagine a digestive process as it goes into your mouth, down your esophagus, into your stomach, into your um, small intestines, into your large intestines. And what does that actually feel like? How long does that process take? It takes different from each food to food. So with this being said, you know, I just want to share... I just wanted to share, you know, what it's like from going to a diet, from a diet to a living. Just coming off of the seven days of raw, taking my time as I readjust back to what actually works for my body, studying Ayurvedic principles, which means life and knowledge, and finding my truth along the path, along the journey. Nobody's perfect. It's nice to have some ice cream, vegan, of course, <laughs> once in a while, but we need to be able to 
know what it is that we're getting ourselves into when we're living, especially in a Western state of mind, you know? Free ourselves from the bondages of material possessions, one of these things being food. So dieting versus living. Dieting versus living, which one are you gonna pick? The truth is in the trees, that is the nature within yourself. Love, light, guidance to all. Peace and blessings.